everyone. So today I am going to be answering some of the questions that I received on my TikTok from you guys um, about what it's like being a female youth pastor or um, being a young person in ministry. You know, I get these questions all the time on my TikTok lives and I get questions in person. I have people message me on Instagram. I get these questions all the time. And so I decided a while back that I was gonna post a TikTok and I had you guys leave some questions in the comment section down below. And let me know what some of you guys um, had questions about. Sometimes it was questions that you guys had for me specifically as an individual. And some of this is gonna be advice for you Maybe you are a youth pastor, maybe you're a female in youth ministry, or you may be a youth leader, you may be a student who's considering going into ministry. I don't know, but this video is for you. Hopefully this is helpful and maybe answer some of your questions that you guys had. And if you are new here, my name is Jessica Geiger. I am a youth pastor and a worship pastor at my church. I am also an evangelist and I am just pursuing the plans that God has for my life. and. I do YouTube a little bit, so here we are. So make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it. And let me know if you guys have any other um, videos you would wanna see from me in the future where I sit down, I talk, something that's different from my typical, you know, vlogs or whatever. All right, let's just jump right in and start with question number one. Okay, I have the questions written down here because I record on my phone. So if you see this, just know, that's what has the questions on it. Okay, so the first question is, do you want to be a youth pastor forever or do you see yourself becoming a senior pastor someday? What I feel called to do long-term in the future is evangelism. I feel called to be an evangelist and be a travel speaker, um, to go to other churches and to preach at revivals and travel to the nations. That's what I feel called to do long-term. Right now, what the Lord has me doing and has called me to do in this season is youth ministry. So I'm gonna be obedient to his calling and his voice and his will for my life. This is what he has for me. So when he says to go, I'll go to whatever he has next, but as long as he wants me here, I'll continue doing youth ministry. At some point down the road, I may be a senior pastor, but I myself, as of right now, don't feel called to be a senior pastor um, someday. But we'll see, I don't know, whatever. Whatever he has for me. So question number two, what kind of school did you go to to become a youth pastor? I was asked about seminary, college, all that. So I actually went to um, community college and then I went to an online, well, it's a lot of my classes were online, but I also went in person um, to a university. I graduated from Athens State University with my bachelor's in behavioral science. Now my degree from college had nothing to do with religion. It had nothing to do with ministry. And I had a lot of peace about that because I feel like in ministry, um, pastors do a lot of counseling. And I know that as a youth pastor, there have been things where I've had to give advice to students or parents, or um, I've had to talk to students that their parents are going through a divorce or um, students that are battling with mental health issues. And I think that it's so important that pastors receive some sort of training um, in the mental health field so that when we do go to counsel others in our church, we're not messing them up by giving them bad advice. You know what I'm saying? So I did get my bachelor's in behavioral science. And if you're not sure what behavioral science is, it's a blend of sociology and psychology. So all that fun stuff. Yeah, and I didn't go to seminary. So in my denomination, we have something called Global University. Um, and it's like an online, um, you can do it at home, go through this books and it's how you can receive your minister's credentials in our denomination. So I am AG, I'm Assemblies of God, and we have Global University. And so right now, currently, I'm a licensed minister in the Assemblies of God. The first level is certified, then there's licensed, and then there's ordained. You have to be 23 years old to be ordained in my denomination, and I'm currently 21. Um, I turned 22 in May, so I have started the coursework for becoming an ordained minister, but I just can't technically receive the official ordination until I turn 23. But I'm getting all the classes done now, so that way when I turn 23, I will just already be ordained. So yeah, but that's what I've done. I do have my license, so I am a licensed minister, and I also have a bachelor's degree from a university. 
The next question was, what was your major in college? So I guess I kind of jumped ahead to that. Um, my major was behavioral science. I love this next question. So question number four is, when did you know that you were called to ministry? I love that question. So sit back, get your snacks, let's talk about it. So I think the big thing about ministry is you have to know you're called, you know what I mean? Like you have to feel a calling um, from God to go and pursue that. So I felt called by God to ministry when I was five years old. Ever since I was five, I had no doubt in my mind that I was put on this earth, I was created um, to do ministry, to be a minister, um, to give my life for the kingdom of God. I was five years old, I was at a revival at my old church from way back when, and we were at a revival, and I remember there was an evangelist there who um, prophesied over me that I would be a voice to the nations, and that I was called to see many people saved and to lead thousands to Jesus. And throughout the years, I've clung to that promise and that reminder um, that even at a young age, God was ready to use me, that God spoke to my heart and said, Jessica, I want to use you. I will set you in the places that you need to be. I'll give you the connections. I'll give you the strength. I'll provide for you. I'll make a way for you. And so ever since I was five, God has always sent pastors and teachers and preachers and evangelists and apostles and prophets. He has sent people all along the way to remind me and encourage me um, and remind me of the promises of God on my life to be in ministry and to fulfill that calling that he's placed on my life. So um, I knew I was called to ministry at a very young age and um, I have been in full pursuit of that ever since. Question number six, okay. Do kids listen to you because of your age? And I actually, paraphrase this one. So they were asking in the comment section if because I'm kind of young and close to some of my students age, um, do they respect me? Which I think is such a fair question. I was worried about that. So I've been a youth pastor since I was 18 years old and I had students in my youth ministry that were the same age as me technically because um, they had already turned 18. It was their senior year and I kind of have like a late birthday. So I'd already graduated high school, but I was still 18. I was always worried about that being a problem, like would the students listen to me, would they respect me, would they take me seriously? And honestly, I have never had a respect issue with my students over my age because they understand my position as a pastor and as a leader and as an authority figure in the church. So um, no, I, I feel like they listen fine and it's kind of cool though because we do have a friendship dynamic where they feel comfortable to talk to me about problems that maybe they wouldn't feel comfortable talking to their parents or an adult or a coach or a teacher about because I am relatable to them. Like it wasn't that long ago that I was in high school, so I get it. I understand the problems they're facing. Like I get it. Whereas some adults, it's been a while since, you know, they have been in high school or they have been in middle school. So um, I think it just makes me more relatable, but no, definitely respect wise or just them paying attention and listening, we don't have a problem with that. Praise the Lord. I love this. So Mike, uh, I don't know, this is question number seven. It doesn't matter. Next question is biggest youth ministry win. Um, I had one the other day, but it's a little personal to the student that it involved. And I have a ton, but I don't want to share stories if, you know, the person it involves doesn't want me to share it. So I'm not going to share the personal ones, but I'll say this, my biggest youth ministry win and I know it's cliche, I know it's cheesy and corny, but anytime I see a student saved, that is like the fuel to keep on keeping on. Yeah, my biggest youth ministry win is anytime a student gets saved, whether they're a brand new student or it's a student I've had with me for a few months and I've been pouring into them and I've been praying for them. And then that moment where it's like the light bulb goes off for them and they're like, oh my gosh. And they have this amazing revelation of, just who God is and how much God loves them. Like that is, you can't even compare that feeling. Like, so yeah, salvation in my students and their friends, biggest win for me, 100%. Next question, do you have any regrets not following a more traditional career? Um, no, I don't. Just to wrap that one up quick, no. I think because of the confidence I have in God and the trust I have in Him, to know that he's called me to do this, why would I want to do anything else? Like his ways and his plans for me are better and they're greater and they're higher. And my plans and my dreams are gonna fail. Like 
I make mistakes. I'm not perfect. And I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds my future. And so when the creator of the universe is saying, hey, you're called to do this, why would we want to do anything else? Like there's a reason God's calling you to do something. So no, I don't have regrets not following a more traditional career. Um, I, I feel like this, there's nothing else. Like when God says, hey, do this, there's no other option. Like that's what I'm going to do, you know? Next question, how old are your students? I teach students in the grades 6th through 12th grade. So that's a pretty wide range um, that I have in my youth ministry. We have middle school and high school on Wednesday nights. It's a lot of fun, great time. What makes a good youth leader? This could be a whole separate video. And honestly, I may do a video um, with just advice for youth leaders, like how to be the best youth leader in the room, how to serve the youth pastor and um, the support that your youth pastor needs that he or she probably is not gonna tell you they need. I'll tell you though, because Look, youth leaders, you guys make all the difference. If we get there on a Wednesday night um, as the youth pastor and we are the only adult in the room, is the show gonna go on? Yes. Are the students gonna be able to tell that we're sweating and we're worried and we're stressed? No, because youth pastors, we got a little bit of ADHD, just a little bit. And so we're really good at winging it. We're pretty good with the flow. And we are not going to let the students see us sweat. Like we're gonna be like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. This is the best night ever. We're gonna have a blast. But deep down that youth pastor is having a little mini panic attack inside because they're like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna get the words on the screen, run pro presenter, get the, I mean like, it's a lot. So showing up makes you a good youth leader. When the youth pastor you're serving under tells you, hey, I need your help with blank. Don't try to go do something else. Like they just told you what would be beneficial and helpful to them. So, um, you know, I, yeah, like have creative ideas. Um, if you have like ideas for sermon series, tell your youth pastor. If you have ideas for how to reach the community and get more students involved, go tell the youth pastor because you have been called to be a youth leader for a reason and you are just as vital. You are just as important. You are just as crucial to that youth service as the person holding the microphone preaching is. Um, the students are looking up to you. They are watching you. You are leading and demonstrating your life in front of them. Like they're watching how you live. They're watching how you treat your friendships. They're looking up to you. And so the youth pastor wants youth leaders that they can trust, that they know are consistent and reliable, that they know have a strong walk with the Lord and that they know this is someone I trust to live out their walk with the Lord in front of my students. And so it's an honor to be a youth leader. It's an honor to be a youth pastor. And it's a job we should not take lightly. The last question, and I love that we're ending with this one, and I didn't even do this on purpose, but we are ending with probably the question that I'm gonna be able to minister to you guys most with. And it's the question, how do you keep going through hate and doubt um, that others express towards you? So for me, a lot of the hate that I receive um, doesn't even come from my church. It doesn't come from people in my congregation. It doesn't come from my students. It comes from TikTok. So first of all, I'll tell you this, any hate I receive on social media, I take as worth a grain of salt. I don't know those people and they're not the person that called me to ministry. So they're not the person that can tell me I'm not called to ministry. You get what I'm saying? Like God's the one that called me so the only one's opinion I'm worried about and concerned about is his. I wanna make sure that I'm being obedient to him and him alone. There is negativity that you receive if you're a female in ministry. There is some hateful comments and looks that you get if you're a young youth pastor, if you're a young children's pastor, if you're a young worship pastor, um, that goes for girls and guys both. But I think especially for females and women in ministry, um, there's a level of criticism we get there's a level of hatred and negative comments that we receive just for our gender. My biggest advice, if you are a female pastor, leader, volunteer, some authority figure in the church, if you are a female leader, this is my advice. Your identity comes from him and him alone. You are not looking for approval from any man, from any woman on this earth. I mean, it's great to get, you know, hey, you did a great job uh, preaching. You know, that's good. And it's good to know that you are doing your job with excellence. But we are living for the approval 
of our creator God in heaven. That's who we are seeking approval from. That's who we are looking for our confidence to come from him. Because words and comments in our comment sections and um, likes and follows, that all fades away eventually. And we're not taking it to heaven with us. So to get so caught up in this world, in this earthly kingdom is a mistake. And we're setting ourselves up to get hurt. We're setting ourselves up to fail. We're setting ourselves up to not be everything God has called us to be. Because when you start looking to others for your confidence or as your source of affirmation, um, you're going to get hurt. And you may even end up quitting and walking away from ministry in general. So my advice is to stay so rooted in the word of God to know he is your foundation, to know that his word is is the final word. It's greater than any person who says, you can't do that, you're a female. You just need to silence the voice of the enemy in your life and be rooted in the word of God because his voice needs to be louder than the enemies. And his voice needs to be louder than people that are not for us and um, are actually against us and wanna see us fail. Be rooted in your word, um, know who he says you are and know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. My next advice, surround yourself with a supportive group of friends, a supportive group of leaders, a supportive group of pastors who has your back, who's gonna cover you in prayer, who you can trust and confide in and say, hey, you know what, I got this comment, or hey, this guy looked at me at church and he said that you know, he didn't respect me because I'm a female pastor. When those people pop up, and they will, and it hurts your feelings or it breaks your heart or it makes you question, am I really called to ministry? Am I really supposed to do this with my life? Um, it's good to have people you can lean on in times of hurt. So make sure you have a support system of, of leaders and friends that truly care about you and want to see you thrive. They want to see you succeed. They want the best for you. They believe in you. They believe in your calling and they are going to cover you in prayer and encouragement. I hope that you enjoyed this Q&A with a female youth pastor who's in her early 20s. Um, I hope that you had fun and enjoyed this. I love doing videos where I sit down, I talk to you guys. So make sure you give this video a big like if you did love it and make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and let me know in the comments down below um, if you have any other videos that you would love to see for me, any other videos um, of covering different topics in the church or in youth ministry that you think could be their own video, we can talk about it, okay? Like that's what this channel is for. All right, I love you guys so much. I will see you in my next video. Peace.